This conference will now be recorded. Lisa, did you do that or Shannon? I did. I realized I could. So I thought, you didn't see my text. I thought I better get cranking. I didn't mean to I'm so glad somebody else. I'm glad somebody else has control. That's so great. Because we can always edit the thing down and get rid of all the fluff, right? But anyway, what, what I'll say is, Stephanie and I are talking big picture. We share a lot of the same vision. I think some of the same passion and just, just the excitement of our business and, 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 and tools like Voss and how it helps the team move forward. And anyway, so we're just kind of brainstorming on some different things, how we want to do to truly elevate. And uh, anyway, we're sitting on one end of the table while Mike comes in and he sits down beside us. And uh, clearly Mike was not caught up on his caffeine like Stephanie and I were. So mm -hmm. We were, we were spitting off a lot of different stuff, and, and poor Mike was looked like he had gotten run over by a train. But anyway, it's been a lot of fun. I, I look forward to, to having her excitement and passion and certainly knowledge uh, of the industry. So now we haven't even started scratching the surface of what you know. So thank you so much. I, I think we'll we'll certainly have a have a dynamic team because, I mean, man, you talk about some powerhouse women uh, between Shannon and Lisa and Stephanie. Man, they may boot me out. Y'all may be. Seeing me as just participant the peer group. So, but so um, anyway, well, uh, well, kind of our, our outlay for today. I mean, just kind of sticking with with a little bit of our routine. Uh, just talking about anything that maybe we were able to work on in our in our last meeting uh, to to discuss. And oh, before we jump into that, also a, a big big thanks to Aaron for for presenting. But then even the week before hosting my business peer group uh, out in Fort Collins. Uh, so guys, thank y'all. We had a great visit, uh, really learned a lot. So it was cool to kind of get to see where y'all, where you are, where you operate. And uh, anyway, y'all got a, y'all got a great company out there. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. So thank you. Um, yeah, we really yeah. enjoyed having everybody out here. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. If you're guys, if you ever find yourself in Fort Collins, give them a shout and there's, there's a lot that they uh, that they're doing right and a lot to learn, so they can certainly flat out get it done. That's for sure, and have a great time in the office. I think one of the biggest takeaways is everybody in our peer groups like coming back ordering bobbleheads. So <laughs> <laughs> they have bobbleheads of everybody in the in the leadership, I guess, in the company. Uh, have bobblehead dolls in the conference room. So, and what do y'all call your conference room? You got a big shark hanging from the ceiling. Uh, the fish tank. The fish tank, yeah. So that's it's a lot, a lot of fun. You can tell y'all, y'all enjoy, um, enjoy what you're doing. So, all right. Well, um, anyway, talking about our last accomplishments, maybe you have something that uh, that you want to share uh, with a group. We'll we'll go through those. Uh, by by popular request, uh, we had talked about the overhead breakout sheet. Uh, and we actually touched on a little bit of that, uh, but since a lot of us are in, we're doing renewals, um, you know, how do we leverage that little piece uh, of the software? So we're gonna kind of take a look at that. I'm sure a lot of good conversation, spinoff conversation to come from it. Uh, and then we'll talk about, hey, some things that we want to apply and then we'll um, have some discussion about uh, what we want to look at next week um, for the group. So, and um, and also we've got uh, some, some new members that are going to be joining us at the, at the first of the year. So we're going to be adding uh, to our talent pool um, in, in the upcoming months. So I look forward to look forward to that. And those announcements come. So we're, we're adding some, uh, adding some good, good participants uh, to add to already some dynamic companies. So, but um, anyway, um, just what are, what are some of the things that, uh, that, that have happened or, or maybe something that you accomplished since our, since our, our last meeting, we can kind of combine those two things. Um, we, can, we can kind of start down south and, and work away north. Robin, what do you guys got happening um, down there at Jubilee? Well, we're getting ahead wrapped around this this overhead breakout sheet. We're trying to get ready. We're hoping to implement it soon. And okay. That's uh, probably, uh, that, that's going to be our biggest move. And hopefully we'll uh, just not, you know, we've been using overhead per hour for so long. It's uh, it's sort of a big step for us. But mm -hmm. uh, look, uh, we're we're headed to that, and I enjoyed being with all of you all at the uh, in Louisville as well. A good time for sure. Good seeing y'all as well. So, 
Nick, what you got happening? Well, Nick Davis, we got we got two Nicks on the call. Oh, we're having a we're having a heck of a fall up here. Um, gotten a lot of rain lately, which I think has kind of been spread across most of the country here, but uh, that's been challenging. But uh, boss wise, I've actually got um, one of uh, one of our admin uh, girls that works for us is coming on full time, and she's taking over a whole bunch of PO stuff. So I've been training her up on that, and that's uh, freeing up some time for me. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just we're just trying to keep our head above water. Got a whole bunch of really big projects we're trying to squeeze in before the end of the year, and things are uh, things are really moving for us right now. Yep. When when will things tell off for you as far as the the growing season and and planting season? We, we really try to push hard until about Christmas. Okay. Um, some years early to mid December we might get to get an early cold snap and might get frozen out of the ground before then but usually we can push pretty hard till about christmas okay oh, cool so um and then ron i see you jumped on Yes, I'm trying to multitask. I've got an irrigation webinar going on at the same time, so I'm trying to do two things at once. All right. Uh, y'all uh, y'all, y'all doing well? Yeah, we we doing well. Just need some labor. Uh, if we get any extra labor, send them down south for us. Yeah. Me and, me and you both. So I, I think everybody around the country has experienced some of the same stuff. Turning the work down every day because we just don't have the labor to get to it. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we got uh, uh, Nick Tennant. Hello, everybody. Um, hey. I'm I'm with uh, H&M Landscaping out of Cleveland. It's my first week with you guys. Um, awesome. I believe Mark Barker sat in on a couple of them previous, and um, yeah. he's actually had a safety meeting for. Um, I guess what our news would be is, is we feel like we're 95% up and running on the snow side of boss things, um, which is good. I know some of you South people are probably wondering what that's all about, but mm -hmm. uh, up here this time of the year, we're starting to think about that and uh, getting contracts in and routes set up and zones and all that happy stuff. So that's what we're been working. That's been our main focus and what we've been working on uh, probably since Parker had the last meeting with you guys. Yeah. All right. Well, good stuff. Good to have you with us. So, Aaron, what about y'all? What y'all got happening? Oh, we are kind of in the middle, of, same as Nick, is getting snow contracts all set up and working on getting the snow module set for this year. Um, not too much other to report in Boss this time around. I haven't, I feel like I haven't been in the office enough to do anything. And and we've got Luna, Sarah's dog, joining us for the call as well today. <laughs> nice, nice, awesome. So, <clears throat> I think that um, that was a a little um, uh, around the room there of uh, what we all got uh, what we all got going. So, um, <clears throat> so things I wanted to cover. Um, number one, just making sure that everybody knows where the overhead breakout sheet is. Uh, we discovered in our in our elevation when it was touched on that uh, that there were some people that didn't even know where the where where the little pie chart was and what that number rep or what that uh, symbol represented. So one, we'll look at that. I think that can be uh, pretty important. But then also too, uh, we're going to look at a at a spreadsheet, and I'll be happy to send. We just made a very, very simple spreadsheet to be able to import your numbers uh, to, to how to find your numbers. Uh, then we're going to work through where to populate your numbers. And then we'll look at some examples to pull in. And um, as always, we'll uh, feel free to just raise a hand. We'll do the best job that we can explain it. If I get in too far over my head, I'll go around the corner and grab Jackie and pull her in this meeting. So I'm sure she'll probably just love that. So, but. Um, I'm gonna grab my my site here and um, 
actually I'm kind of tinkering around with uh, our our test site. So, but um, one thing that um, that I that I pulled in was um, let's see, this is one of the things that sometimes this thing will run slow during a meeting, so I may actually use my live site. We'll see. We'll see how it works because it's painfully slow to me. All right, we'll see. So when you're in one of your bids, and I just ran a little um, a, a test contract here, um, this, the overhead breakout sheet is this little graphic that sits over here to the right of the print button. And so when you select on this, on this sheet, it's gonna pull in um, the, where the job is with standard pricing, where we have the job actually currently pricing, and then it's going to give us a breakdown of our direct cost of labor and materials. Um, as, as we've been investigating this, we have, uh, we have tried to simplify some stuff back behind it. So I'll explain what we've learned through this. Um, then it shows us our, it sums up our total direct cost and then looks at our margin. And then it applies our overhead applied for our labor and our materials. Uh, shows what that's going to represent. And then where we have our net profit, where that is applied, gives us our break even point on the job. And then it calculates our labor hours. Now I've yet to figure this one out. I've divided this number by a couple of different things. And Shannon, I don't know if you know where uh, it's uh, pulling those numbers from, um, but I've tried to, to search out uh, that number without a tremendous amount of success, but, um, but that's gonna give you a labor number um, down there so um Shannon, are you uh, are you aware of, of that calculation of where it's going to pull in that cost on our labor hour yeah i'm just refreshing my memory where okay. it's coming from but yeah i can times it out and figure it out yeah okay well something to think about it's uh we'll we'll, we'll get down we'll get down to it but uh Anyway, so that's just the, the overview. That's that's what that, that sheet looks like. So, but to be able to find out, well, how are we gonna, you know, capture these numbers? There's a, there is a, a, a deep dive uh, video on this thing, but for the sake of uh, working through this, uh, we put together a spreadsheet that we can send out to, uh, to be able to, to help maybe speed the process along. But, what you're gonna go after is your total revenue. Um, what you have, then you're going to take your total cost of goods, get your percentage there, look at your total expenses, and then you're going to um, use those numbers uh, in the calculation to break out your different divisions between your landscape, your maintenance, enhancement, irrigation, lighting. These are our, our different classifications of, of revenue. Uh, that, that we want to apply. So it's gonna give you a percentage of our income. So by dividing our total revenue by our landscape revenue there, and our portion of overhead is going to be um, pulling, we've got, I've got one of these things um, hidden up in here. Let me pull this down. So there, so it's gonna be pulling this number from oh, I got some more stuff hidden there. So so that's where we're going to have our expenses, our overhead to give us our percentages um, throughout. And then our aggregate, what Jackie pulled, is our company-wide portion of our cost of goods is at 67. So that's by taking our total expenses and our cost of goods to give us 67% of what we want to apply as our overhead. So currently right now, Jackie and I are having this discussion. We're running pretty high because our materials uh, are up there. Uh, I don't feel like we're doing a great job being very efficient with uh, with how we're running. Uh, I think we're we're spending some labor dollars that we shouldn't. Uh, we we got some we got some margin that we can be picking up uh, pretty good. But this sheet, uh, you can simplify this sheet. You can 
add on to the sheet, but I'm happy to send this thing out as a template. Again, it's, it's pulled from uh, a deep dive video, but I figured, hey, if we have a little template to plug in there, send that out and uh, and maybe that's that's useful to others. But this gives us a breakdown of our percentages and how they're applied. Mm -hmm. So to go into your system to be able to, to pull these things, um, you got a couple of different areas. Um, I'll fan this out just so we can see for, for terminology sake. But the first place is if you go into your services, you're going to have your item category class. And you'll need to go into your item category class and you will add these items in where you have your labor. And this is going to have our overhead applied to this number. So our 67 is what we're really wanting to make sure that we're selling our labor at top dollar. Uh, our materials, we have those set at 55%. Uh, subcontractors will put 20% on top subs and then any kind of other direct job cost, maybe uh, permits, uh, things like that, that, that we're not running the same margin. But you can apply whatever you want to. And again, this is going to be, this is going to impact the overhead recovery sheet. So uh, what, don't, don't get this confused with things that you're necessarily doing in your catalog. What you're setting in your catalog is actually going to move to your bid. This is strictly for working in our overhead recovery sheet. But that's where you do those. So you're in services and your item category class is what you're looking for. And again, um, some of these could possibly be located in a different area if you've gotten in and, and changed your, your views. This is I'm in an administration view. So this is where I find my item category class. But this is ultimately what you want to look for. So the other item that we need to be able to pull in <clears throat> is what uh, percentage of profit uh, that we want to add. And so to be able to get that, you're going to go into your support, or this is where we're going to find it, and you're looking for the branch. So you're looking for your branch module, and we're going to say find. Well, for us, we only have our one branch here. So we're going to select that branch, and then we're going to go to our overhead breakout worksheet. That's what we're targeting and then this is where we're going to apply our net profit to our contracts to our work orders and to our construction work orders if you want to have different profit centers if you're doing a lot of tnm work out of work orders you may want to put that profit percentage a little bit higher here um, for your maintenance contracts maybe they're lower maybe construction work orders are a little bit higher profit again this is going to be applied to not the standard pricing but what um what you maybe want to um, price the job out. So those are the indicators that you gotta make sure that you have set before you can go into your overhead breakout sheet. Those are the factors that need to be set in there first. There's one other adjustment that can be made. If you go down in here to system admin, you go to manage system settings, and if you go to the bids tab, there's a button down here on the bottom that you can say enforce overhead breakout worksheet. And if you enforce this by checking that box, each time that you're in a bid, it's going to pull that window up. And whoever's doing the bid, it, it's going to force that window so they're not automatically selecting. Now, you may drive your estimating team crazy by doing that. You may not want to see that window, but that way, it's gonna it's gonna force that uh, window to pop up. I have on on ours on our construction work orders the one thing that I do have forced is the schedule of values, and I found out the reason why I have that selected is because guys were doing uh, construction work orders, but we do uh, progression billing. Well, when they don't create the schedule of values, when we try to go and bill on a percentage. Well, it's not there because it hasn't been set and it needs to be set. So um, Jackie was having to go back and undo some work to be able to get back to a schedule of values. So this always pops up uh, for us to have to have to make sure that we set that. But uh, anyway, well, sidebar jumping into construction work orders. But this is where you would enforce that is going into your system settings and under the bid tab. So um, before we look at an example, any any questions 
um, on on any of those on on where to go to to get those default settings in. All right. Hey, hey, John. I'm sorry, yes. I was having trouble finding my um, microphone. Um, the schedule of values is. Would, would you talk about that uh, again for a minute? Why? Why you? It seems like we were used. We turned that off, and we were, it was creating some complications. But I don't haven't used it in a while. But um, I, I tell you what, for. The, Let's let's come back. Let's run through this overhead recovery sheet. Yeah. And then okay. let's 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 come back. Make sure that make sure that you remind me on that. Okay. And, uh, All right. That's and look at that schedule, schedule of values. So because we can do that out of a construction work order. So. All right. So um, I've already got a couple things set up here just so uh, maybe speed and efficiency that we can we can look at. So I've got a, a, a test contract set up. All right. Now this is just our default. I haven't come through and I haven't edited anything. And one thing that I discovered uh, as I was working through this is I was getting a little frustrated because I couldn't uh, see numbers that were that were matching up because I'm looking at total cost. I'm looking at my total price right there. So let's take a look at this overhead recovery sheet for this for this bid that we got. All right. So it's showing standard pricing. If if we would if we would have left everything just kind of as is per system, this is kind of what would have come up as our standard pricing. But we've got some additional things that are here that uh, that maybe we've moved some things up a little bit. Maybe we've made some adjustments. So right now, this is telling us, that, hey, this is what we're selling this work for. And you can see this ten thousand nine forty three is what we're trying to sell this work for. All right. So if we look at our standard pricing, if we had changed everything back down to, to kind of our, maybe our system defaults without doing the, uh, without having our template, because what I built this off of is a, is a maintenance template. It's saying that, well, hey, here's your standard pricing on this job. And it's applying, there's our 67% for our labor. Here's our 55% for our materials. It's applying our overhead. Here's our net profit. Now this was thing, you know, I've, I've already revealed I'm an Auburn student, graduate, whatever you want to call it, and from Alabama. So it took me a little while to figure this out, but I like to add things all the way down here at the bottom. Well, this is this is our, our total, what, what we should be selling the job. So when I was trying to add some stuff down here, I was kind of getting thrown for a loop. I'd rather it be down here, but but our, our sum price is back up here at the top. So maybe everybody else caught that. I missed it. I was struggling to kind of find where my number was, but all these things are working their way down to feed back up to the top. So anyway, this is our uh, set. We got our net profit that's being applied here. So it's showing that if we actually sell this job for what we're saying, it is $10,000, and we actually hit our budgeted materials, we hit our budget man hours, that we ought to walk away from this job at the end of the day with a 33% net profit. After it's all said and done, this is where we should end up. Right now, we've got our, our target of 12 set. But we're making some of the adjustments to our to our template because we've gone through here and maybe we've added in uh, some extra margin um, in in how we're how we're running this across through here. Or maybe we've got in our turf rounds, we've got a, a chemtech set up in here. Uh, where maybe we're adding in some additional margin over the 67. So that's where it's driving and we're pushing our price up a little bit from, from the standard. And it's probably pulling that maybe we made some adjustments in our hours through here. So we're pushing a few more hours into the job than what we had anticipated in the standard pricing, uh, reading off that default. So that's why we're dealing with the two numbers. So if we set this number here, if we're bidding this job and we won't make this adjustment, and we go 82, eight. All right, it's going to make these numbers identical all the way down through there. But if we're wanting to push that job back up to our 10,000, it's going to change our numbers through the, how we have the job priced. And then it's going to show this labor hour, but down here, what we're selling our work. So, yeah. 
And this is Shannon. One of the things when I was looking at this is that you'll notice the total direct job cost on both columns is is always the same. OK, um, you know, obviously where it changes is when you start changing the price where you're going to charge for uh, the customer. OK, and what you'll notice next is the total overhead applied that didn't change as well. OK, if you wanted to. Um, yep, yeah, you can change that. Just make it 75%. Okay, so it does give you the flexibility to change it. So, um, you know, which is nice because right now it's just pulling from the system settings that John had showed you. But once again, really what, what's making the profit is if you look at the net profit applied, third column from the bottom. So John's system setting is at 12%, okay? Um, and then where, because we increased the job to 10,000, we would be making 30%. So when I would roll this out, there's a couple, you know, it's good to know what are the pulls and triggers to change a couple things that are important. One is your net profit, right? Because we always kind of want to achieve a net profit, but then also is how much you're billing per hour. And that's like the last line. So you'll notice it's 195.88, John, all the way over to the left, labor hours. Okay, so that right there is saying in your bid, you have 195 hours. And if you sell it at the standard price, you're making 38 an hour. And then if you sit, if you um, increase it to 10,000 versus the 8,000, you're gonna be making 48 an hour. So, you know, sometimes when we look at it, I always would like to say, hey, is our net profit where we want to be? You know, right now it's 12%. If our goal is 10 and we're bidding at 12, is that good? You know, and then also I look at how, what we're making per hour. So if, um, sometimes some companies like to make on their enhancement like 55 an hour. You know, if they're mowing or if it's not as difficult enhancement job, they're fine with 35 an hour or 40. So I was just like to explain so people can kind of see between that profit and what you're making per hour, you know, to, to come up with what you're going to eventually uh, charge the customer. Does that make sense, everyone? Questions on that? Yeah. Well said, Shannon. Thank you. And that, and that was one thing that, that we were looking and studying, and, and this is our test site that's got some, some old data that's, that's pulling in. We've made some adjustments um, through this that, that, have really, that have really helped. But, but I like, um, and, and I think if I recall you saying this, Shannon, let's say that the client, you know, they were, you know, they wanted this job lower. I think it was right around, you know, $10,943. Uh, and they're like, well, really, our budget is 10. Um, you plug that 10,000 in and then scroll down there. I mean, it's, you know, gives you, I think, in, Shannon, what you had talked about is just kind of having those thresholds for your team and be like, you really want to sell work at $44 an hour? That's some cheap labor right now, you know? Um, so I think that's a, that's a, that's a good indicator. Uh, and then two, the, I, th I think it's pretty important as well to really go through and study on these numbers as far as like what we're applying on our overhead, you know, your materials, your net profit um, that you're wanting to apply to make sure that you're getting this accurate data um, out of here. So it, it takes a little bit of accounting work uh, as yep. well. And then the one other comment to all of this, I always tell um, our salespeople when they're bit building the bid, what happens if it's not 195? Let's say it's 250, 250 hours. You know, it's just going to impact the dollar per hour and the net profit. Mm -hmm. um, what if it's mulch and they put in 10 yards and it's really 15 yards? You know, so, you know, I always would say make sure you're really doing a good job of number of hours and putting all the materials in your bid and then come to this screen. 
because sometimes we would always find that our salespeople would be a little bit tight on the hours, um, maybe a few yards less for mulch. <laughs> and then you come here and you're 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 not seeing the true picture. So I'd always say make sure you really build your proposal with what's needed and maybe a little buffer of labor in your proposal. So when you come here, you really know what you're buying the job for. Hmm. And and Shannon, one thing that I was looking at is let's say that we put this job in and, and we want to go to an, an even 11,000, right? And it's given me some messages that up here that it may be affecting and we've got some different rounding features in here. But if we put this 11,000 in, so you see this 10,000 that's back here in the back. If we update this, it's going to change that number here. Now, with this is one thing that Jack and I were talking about is I think that some of that rounding may be applied to our system that's kind of giving us a number that's outside of our 11. Um, once once we made that adjustment, it's it's not making that an, an even 11,000. It's giving us some 11,000 and, and some change out there. So, but the message that it was giving us is we've got some different different rounding features that are in here, and maybe some different thresholds of of minimum charge. Um, I don't know if many of y'all have that set, but um, but if, if if we bid a if we bid a, a a chem job and and it's and it's well down below um, the our our minimum price, if we're ever trying to make an adjustment to that bid, sometimes we've seen that there's an error uh, in the bid, and it's because we've got some of these thresholds set that we never like with our irrigation, we never want to go and and do an irrigation startup for less than ninety five dollars. It, even if it only takes us 15 minutes, there's still a flat fee of that 95. Um, but if I go in and, and look at this job, it right now it's saying that it's it's a uh, it 58 bucks because you know we only we only have this um, this pool again maybe some old data in here, but our total price is is 58 dollars. But I want to make sure that I get that that 95 dollars an hour of our our minimum fee. So that, that may be some of the some of the rounding pieces that are in there. So but any any questions off of off of where we are so far? John, I do have, yeah, have John, one. John. I'm sorry, go go ahead, Shannon. Or somebody. Uh is Aaron. Um so on our the way we've got a lot of our services set up right now is we have the overhead included in the margin percentage so are we going to have to go in and change our margin percentages on our services before we do go in and start creating um or putting the overhead in so we can use the breakout worksheet well um shannon you were you were shaking your head do you yeah no so aaron like how you have it all set up on the services is completely fine so what okay. what we're going to do is um yeah so this you'll you'll normally bid as you you do um and then when you're done bidding you'll just go to the overhead x um, icon on the top right of the bid screen john like where you yep Okay, and so go ahead and click on that for me if you wouldn't mind. So what this is doing is this job, a direct job cost, labor material, Aaron, that mm -hmm. those two numbers, that's the sum of all of your service line items. This is what it ended up collectively becoming to. Um, and then it's really the overhead area where you're just trying to, you know, capture for your net profit. Okay. Yeah. Because it's not it's not letting you adjust like on. Um, so I, I guess all your services are combined to these labor and material. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because when I was, <clears throat> and and this may not be a good because most of our maintenance is just is, you know, just our labor only. So. If let's see if we put that in as an hour. So that's driving that up to that 47. And that's why we got some of this stuff 
you know, adjusted down, but that's getting us closer back to, you know, 57. We got our maintenance bit a little bit less than, than a construction team. That's kind of the hour that we're going for with, with construction, but maintenance it and, and selling for that much, it may be closer around $50. So that brings it down to, you know, 62%, but. So. And then, <clears throat> so, um, and, and this is one talking about just kind of kind of round these things out um, a little bit of a maybe an offshoot, but still as we're talking about renewals, you, know, you got the auto round feature um, that's in here, and then also you can you can go ahead and save this uh, right now. Let's see if I can if I can save it. See right now it's asking for a password. I'm the only one that can override that eight dollars and thirty-one cents. I've got this threshold set to if it's a dollar or less, anybody can hit save and that dollar washes and it's gonna it's just gonna do an auto round there. But if you wanted to actually get that uh, to to exact to where all of your dollars we got we got to put the eight dollars and thirty-one cents into this bid somewhere. And what our practice has always been, we go into a one-time, we go into a one-time item, and we could put this um, eight dollars and thirty-one cents into this line here. And this can make a small adjustment here of eight dollars and thirty-one cents. And if we came down and we hit save you'll see this number round out. And now when you do your auto round, all of your numbers, you're even here. And then your total number here is even. So that, that's been our practice of how do we even out our contracts by finding a one-time occurrence and, and, and plug that number in as opposed to just wasting $8. Now, if it gets down to 64 cents or something like that, you probably could waste that out and you wouldn't miss it. Some people may not miss eight bucks. I don't know, but that's just been our practice. I'm, I'm curious to know how others um, are, are using that as well. We do the same thing. We adjust like that on a one-time service mm -hmm. if we need to. Same here. That's what yep. we did is It'll drive, it'll drive you crazy if you try to do it on one of those <laughs> recurring uh, occurrences. No, yeah, if you, if you got 26 visits, you, no, yeah. no, you, 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 you chase yourself around and around and around. But the, the other thing that uh, going, going in, I mentioned the, um, mentioned those settings. If you go back into that, if you go into the branch and Let's see here, and in, in thresholds, um, that's where you can put in that budget billing threshold here. And then that's going to, if you, if you put in, you know, a dollar uh, and update that, anything that's a dollar or less, or if you said, you know what, $10 is, is fine. You put that in and that's going to let those uh, be able to, to, to round that out without having to go through that step or password protect. So, what happens on that ten dollars? I, I mean, it makes sense to set it up a little higher like that. It doesn't. The the, the budget billing doesn't add up uh, to the contract amount, or does it adjust the contract? What what, yeah, what happens? It, it, you'll you'll all all around it, but you're leaving that eight dollars and and whatever change just just out there. It's not going to be billed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, eight dollars is a value mill at Burger King. I'm I'm going to keep my eight. You know. <laughs> Buy me a bag of beef jerky on some road trips. I just don't. I don't want someone to spend too much time trying to figure it out on yeah. a lot of these things. You know, you just want to be able to move. Yeah. Move through. You know, it, since since we've been doing it, and and our our internal training and Aaron, it sounds like y'all are similar. 
once every single contract that we have is going to have a one-time occurrence that's there. And I mean, like whether whatever round you want to put it in, I mean, we're doing seven round programs. We've got two plant rounds and we've got our irrigation and lighting start. We're going to be able to, we're going to be able to put that somewhere. So, but that is what it looks like on a, on a, on a maintenance bid. Uh, you can also uh, set these up for, um, let's see here on our construction work order. Here's a, here's a, a, a test item uh, that we had plugged in here. So we've got our demo and prep and some irrigation and whatnot. So if we go and look at this, same thing, it's going to, it's going to have our, have our pricing uh, in here and we can make those adjustments uh, as needed uh, if we wanted to run that job up to the to an even 4,000. Uh, same, same rules apply, changing our, our hours there. Clearly we don't have a lot of total labor hours in this, in this job, it's an example, but um, let's, let's hit update and see what we do. So it, 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 rolled, that, it rolled that job up to that 4,000, got it a little bit closer, so. They're adding those 40 hours back in there. So, so it can be done for your construction work orders and then also to um, for uh, work orders as well. So we'll look at this test irrigation. Ooh. Run over the top of it. Yeah, there we go. So. So same thing. Hey John, on the um, calculation for fifty-one seventy-two an hour, that is uh, the hours divided by the the labor. Where is that labor total? Um, where's that number calculation coming from? Yeah, Shannon, did you ever um, discover that? That was the number I was looking for as well, Robin. Um, yeah. Sorry, you were going back and forth because you're. I'd need a full screen of it, and I could just back it out. Um, it's probably what it's doing. It's probably taking um, the profit minus the materials. I don't know if it's um, factoring a percentage of material markup or just the straight material markup, and then dividing that by the number of hours on a job. So um, let's see here. And, and Rob, I can ask that. I can. It's eleven thousand. Numbers not shown on on the breakout, but it's yep. it's an internal calculation. Apparently, it's about. A, Eleven thousand five hundred dollars. You know. And I think that may be your realized rate. Is that uh, maybe another term for it? Um, or, or estimated realized rate? Um, Shannon, can you, you can. Right. One of those terms I see on some of these reports. Mm hmm. Oh, to the right, John. Estimated. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's saying 5202. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, any other before we and, and Robin, I'll I'll touch on I'll I'll touch on the, the schedule of values um, here in just a little bit. But does any anybody have any questions on that on that overhead recovery as far as the where to get the default set up and then how to view the sheet and and then make those adjustments as needed? Hey, John. Yeah. Go is ahead, there Aaron. a threshold of that we can set up so that they can only change it by like a certain percentage or a certain dollar amount? So they don't yeah. like change too much before or you yes. know on that worksheet? Let me look in a couple different places. So let's see here. Here's the default. I knew there there are a couple different areas for thresholds. Uh, that are in here. I don't know, uh, Shannon, if you know right off the top of your head, or Lisa, if you know right off the top of your head. Um, Stephanie, do you know by any chance, new elevation team member? So, mm -hmm. um, I, I just learned about this uh, system settings today. Um, <laughs> they told us to go. So I was like, oh, I recognize that. <laughs> I don't know if Shannon knows. I don't know. There was sure I think we could verify if. I would think that these numbers would apply to the percentages or the amounts on the on the overhead breakout worksheet as well. But I mm -hmm. need to Thank you. But I know you had had these system settings that are here, and then also having the down here in the branch, you have your your thresholds uh, there as well. So. Okay. And branch settings override system settings. If you're just one branch, then you wouldn't necessarily need to enter anything here other than that um, budget billing rounding that John showed earlier. So what you're saying, Lisa, is the branch settings will override system settings? Yeah, if you had multiple branches and a certain branch um, needed a different thresholds in the system settings and this is where you'd set that but if you don't have multiple branches you only need to set system setting yeah. threshold okay see look at that we, we're, we're talking about the overhead breakout sheet and, and you get this little extra in here we're learning about thresholds too so just don't want to be able to change by like 10 percent 30 percent you know yeah all right. Well, um, Robin, you had mentioned. I'm going to see if this if this will work from our from our test site here, um, and see if I've got enough data. Let's uh, let's let's do this real quick. Let's throw in let's throw in some. So, right there, are two places that this comes up. <clears throat> when you do a a submit uh, for, for the bid, it's going to show you your your schedule of values um, that are in here. And so, um, right now, uh, I would need to to create an item. Uh, so this is going to pull up when we get ready to build this job. Mm -hmm. So right now, if I if I didn't do anything. All right. If I, if I hit submit and I bypass this step, it's going to ask you one more time. It's going to ask you when you sign the job. So I could I could go through here and just say save, and it's going to it's going to tell you enable save, and you say okay, uh, because I've got some system settings. I'm not in my real site, but so you would come in here and you would want to do your so hey. And then give this how you want to 
to do it and you can just say each ah, that should have been one all right my bad i'm not thinking so this is going to be irrigation installation all right that's what you title it sorry uh, your quantity is one each and then you're going to give this a value of six thousand seventy eight uh, now, let's say that if you had uh sleeving in here as as part of your uh irrigation revenue mm -hmm. you can go in and put in and this is what we normally do and let's say our sleeving's uh two thousand dollars all right so that needs to become four thousand all right so it balances this uh, so now when you are going to do your uh percentage of completion billing you're going to have the ability to say how much percentage of sleeving has been done mm -hmm. you can bill out 100 percent zero percent of irrigation so the next time you come around you're going to be able to do the same thing with your landscape revenue so I've got a couple of different sections in here where I've got my um, I've got my demo and prep, and that demo preps $142, and then my side installation, and that side installation is $14,045. So it balances this out. Mm -hmm. So now it tells me down here at the bottom, I have nothing left that's remaining. So I'm going to save this. And so <clears throat> once we sign this bid and we get ready to go do our, our progress billing, those, uh, those items have been done. Now, it, I have ours to where once we want to sign the bid, it pulls that back up. Now, our process is we don't we can skip the schedule of values when we submit it but we have to uh we have to when we sign the job this is when the schedule comes up that's mm -hmm. where we're entering because i'm not going to ask our guys on the estimating team to go through and do uh, a big schedule of values when we're bidding the job we don't even know if we have it yet because mm -hmm. it, this job's pretty simple but mm -hmm. when we do a two hundred thousand dollar residential job there are a lot of line items that we're going to build based on percentage of completion so we wait until we know, hey, we got the job, let's sign the job, then we'll build out our schedule. All right. So um, I'm, I am wondering here if, um, if I've got a, uh, if I got a, a job, if this is pulling over from our, yeah, it's, it's not going to grab any data from the last time this uh, pulled up, but I was hoping I could get an get an example of a of a job that we've done where I know that we have a schedule. It's not it's not pulling that in there. Um, probably could go into maybe this will give us a give us a schedule. Here we go. No. That was a manual bill type. That one was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all all of our all of our jobs, all of our installation jobs are manual bill. So this is our schedule of values that we set for this job. So this has already been invoiced, but this shows our sleeving, our dollars, and then the percentage of what was billed out. And. <clears throat> So we we build them and this payout we build for sleeving and for our irrigation. Um, let's get a print off of that. Uh, here's what ours looks like when we when we print this thing off. So it's going to show the schedule here of irrigation sleeving. And then the irrigation installation that was that was complete, what we were done this period that based on that percentage of, of what was done, and that's holding out for for the retainage on that job here. But is is everybody using the the AIA uh, payment application for their? 
Only when we have to. We um <clears throat> we it used to be a frustrating task, but when boss put that feature in, this is how we bill every single client that we have now, even residential clients, because we're able to just we used to get off a system and had this spreadsheet that ran calculations about payments applied to everything and man we've just simplified it and and we we've gone through and modified this a little bit i think we have one in here that's for a residential job that doesn't have quite the complexities but uh this has been a very very useful tool uh for us to have this aia document uh in template so so john how do, how does the change orders work if you create an, another construction work order, will it link it or only on the master contract and you add a change order, would it link it to this? It should, it should link it. Let's see. Not, somebody remind me that I'm in my live site before I do something to an existing job. <laughs> You're in your yeah. test site, right? No. No, this is this is this is the real deal. I mean we're, uh -oh. we're playing we're playing with a lot around here. So let's see. I know we had a I had a change order in this job. So Yep, right there for fifty. Yeah, got got that one. Uh we have yet to go out and do that for that dollar general. Okay. That was done. Uh, I I think Shannon that it does it it adds it to uh, it it adds it to that payment sheet so okay. uh, maybe a Jackie question mm -hmm. so, Robin did that help with the schedule of values did that that answer that question I haven't used it in a while and I. I we were doing that manual calculation and off trying to complete some contractors billing and stuff and brian uh brian we probably need to enable that um thing again we just need to get ahead around it yeah that's the first i've seen it looks a lot easier than what i've been <laughs> yeah yeah it, it just our you know our desire uh, we had all these spreadsheets and and the whole reason why we came to this system is to is to to have one universal location and and we just keep finding different ways to just stay within the system stay within the system and when when we were introduced to that schedule of values and then the the, the aia uh document that we can print off and, and that document is done and then we went into our report template our report designer and kind of modified it for a residential uh it was a it was a game changer for us so um real, really simplified we didn't have to worry about messing up a uh messing up a a, a spreadsheet so let's see if i can go and I t oh i know let's see here so that was the commercial let me do one for uh here we do uh, So when we print this, print schedule of values and invoices. So we've got a we got a commercial and a residential. So mm -hmm. we've got this back application and print. And I think this one may be a little bit. Let's see if it changed anything. Kind of the same. Maybe we were trying to simplify it. We were like, you know what? Just, let's let it roll. Um, maybe if we had some complexity, we won't be getting questions. People would just write the check, go on down with it. So, but, but you know, Brian, for us, I mean, you know, we didn't have to worry about updating payment apps. I mean, as soon as you do it, you know, you get a lot of updates um, and, and just let the system carry you and, and you don't have to have to do anything else. So. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So there's a always kind of a little side shoot that comes out of these out of these conversations and how we're all 
how we're all utilizing the system. And I know in, in preparation, um, I don't know if I have more questions. I know I'm a lot more uh, inquisitive about the overhead breakout summary because I, I want to know the exacts. I, I want to I want to see numbers matching up. If, if if I pull a report, I want the I want the exact number to match. And so it's it's forcing us to dig deeper into our system and get better uh, in the system to have more understanding. Um, so. Maybe, maybe that's a challenge to us all to, to go through and, and look at how we have some things set up. And that was one thing that Jackie was pointing out to me is, um, you know, we've just been rocking along been incredibly busy and, you know, we're making some changes to some templates. And all of a sudden when we do the template, we override a default uh, value. Well, if we haven't gone into our system and made that same update and change, well, that's where we may be getting some errors in numbers and reporting. So it's been a great reminder for us to constantly, and, and I preach on this a lot, is, is the maintenance of our systems, of going through there and just making sure that we're, if we're making this adjustment, if we, if we recognize we're bidding a job low and we, and we make the adjustment to get our, our labor, what we want to charge per hour right, well, let's take the time to go back in and change it into that item or into, into that service. And, and update, and that's going to be a big wintertime project for our teams uh, here. Or making some of those updates, and um, and and just going through our catalog, making sure pricing set right. So, all right. So, John, I have a question for you, real quick. You mentioned yeah. something about updating your catalog. How are you? working through that with like the ever-changing price issue right now with supply of plant material or materials because it can vary I mean it can swing from one end to the other within seven mm -hmm. days are you just adding a percentage or something or increasing um, your markup just to accommodate any that you yeah, so there's there's a there's a way in the in the system that you can go and you can you can get an export and create an Excel uh, export that's going to give your materials. Um, you, you can you can take all your materials and um, and and print those off to an Excel template. You can send that to your vendor, and we do this a lot with irrigation, and, and Jackie's the one who does it. Um, so I'm just kind of doing the best to paraphrase what her process is. But she'll go in and she'll mark, hey, we're looking strictly for irrigation. We're going to print those materials off, send that to our vendor. Our vendor is going to make that update. And then we can take that same print off and update our numbers. And then you can add that back into your system. You can do an upload, make sure that it's in the right, what is it, a, is it a CVS or a CSV or um, the formatting of your, of your numbers in that X, in, in the Excel document. And then that's going to upload your system. That's going to get your true number of the direct cost of the material with your desired markup of the material versus like, well, hey, I just want to add a percentage. Now that'd be a very easy way to do it. Say, man, we've seen an increase in materials across the board of 4%. You can go into your settings. You can make that increase. You can do the same application for labor materials. But if it's very specific or maybe it's uh, a little bit up and down per vendor, like let's say PVC has really gone up but a lighting fixtures kind of remain the same, um, we can be very specific in updating our catalog pricing based on what they're sending us. So that, that is our, that has been our practice. Um, does anybody else have a, a, a different, more simplistic approach than that? I'm going to circle back on um, the overhead breakout worksheet for just a moment. The question came up about uh, the threshold and the overhead breakout worksheet. So I did verify that the overhead breakout worksheet does honor your system setting threshold with those percentages or dollar amounts. So if a, if a estimator does not have the authority based on thresholds to increase or decrease a bid by or usually increase a bid by a certain amount the thresh uh the overhead breakout worksheet will honor that thanks lisa i appreciate that you're welcome swan's fees the best
All right. Um, well, kind of as we as we close out, uh, we can kind of circle the room a little bit, and um, you know, if, if there's anything that you that you pulled from the meeting or things that you want to implement, um, what what are some of the actions that you're going to take or, or list out there as boss goals? Um, or is everybody trying to do their best just to get jobs in the ground and and, and work and and working on this stuff, you know, later on? But what what are some goals that are that are out there? I think for us, it's just getting everything snow wise finished up and ready to go because who knows when snow is actually going to hit. And then um, I've already I've started my list of off season projects for boss and it's getting longer by the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. One thing that we that we started out and this it, it happened when we were we were pretty new once we kind of got our 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 legs underneath us and started using the system i would i would try to have a a monthly boss meeting uh with the with our teams that were riddle really utilizing the system and just asking like hey what what do you need from the system maybe what is it that you're most frustrated with what's not working um and just kind of gaining insight back from the from the end user um is is anybody else are y'all having a, a a rhythmic meeting um to to gain insight from from your users on boss no, we haven't done anything like that. It usually becomes one of those things that just somebody will come to us and say, you know, hey, I need this from boss or this isn't working for me. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we we dive into it and see what's going on. Yeah. We we tried to and, and the reason why I bring that up, we tried the approach because I can sit down and I'll, I'll kind of get lost in, you know, whether it's an assembly or how I want something to look and I'll just spend hours doing it. And I'm so excited and I, I, I tell everybody what I've worked on and they're like, well, OK. And um, I was like, well, that that's not going to help you. And they're like, well, not as much as fill in the blank would have. So it's kind of like the same theory of, of how boss does it is they'll, you know, look at service tickets and how many tickets have been created and say, hey, the majority of our users all have this similar request. Let's make sure that we get this executed in our next release. So. That was, uh, that was something that I tried to listen to our teams with here internally before I go off on my tangent, trying to implement, um, like I said, a, a new email template or, or whatever it may be that nobody else uses except myself. So. All right. Brian, what y'all got? What uh, y'all got anything that, uh, that you think some, some low hanging fruit or a big project you're working on? I think we'll really take a look at this overhead uh, breakout. Um, at least make sure what we're doing now is good information. Mm -hmm. I think other than that, it's uh, just trying to keep things running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brian, what about you guys? Well, unfortunately, we're about to have to drop a bunch of our residential clients because we don't have the um, labor force to carry through the winter once our H2 big workers go back to Mexico for the winter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got to restructure, raise our rates, and uh, try to figure out how to recruit people that are going to stay with us. Um, we're just competing against the government. You know, they're paying folks to sit at home and yeah. hard to get them to come in and work, work, do do hard labor when uh, the government going to pay you to sit at home and give you food stamps and all that good stuff. Yeah, and I wish we could solve that in one of our elevation meetings, but I don't think we get very far. I know it's frustrating. So hopefully, this over, over working on this overhead recovery worksheet will help us determine where we need to be and what we need to be charging, so we can be uh, profitable on the jobs that we do decide to to hang on to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Davis, um, no, you're double double duty with a couple of couple of meetings learning some irrigation as well but uh what what you got what you can be working on i think that was the other nick who was doing the doing the two different meetings at once but uh man i really like uh your aia sheet um i like you had explained i i do all of our aia stuff on excel sheets uh separate from boss so i need to get that figured out uh because that would save me a bunch of time 
when billing comes around for those projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's definitely something I'd like to work on. And then our big push right now is just, you know, trying to get projects in the ground and wrapped up um, before the weather calls it quits for us. All right. And cool. If, um, if I can be of assistance with that on that AIA sheet, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. So. Okay. Awesome. Nick, what about uh, about you guys? Hey, John. Um, I wish actually Mark Barker was here for this because he does a lot more of the sales and the uh, construction side of the company. I'm more of our maintenance division, but okay. it is valuable for the maintenance side as well. Um, it's probably something along with what Aaron said that's going to be like a winter project because right now we're, you know, we're uh, full steam ahead trying to get our snow set up because it'll be our first winter in, in Boston snow. Um, but um, on a side note, um, I think it was, uh, he might, looks like he might've jumped off already. Uh, he asked the question about like that revenue per hour, what we were wondering what that number was. I have mm-hmm. a good email from Jarrett that actually our owner reached out when he was dabbling around in Boston, asked a question where he gave us, uh, he gave us a link to an article and he also gave us like a worded expl- explanation that I could share with everybody. If uh, John, when you send out that, template spreadsheet i can reply all with Garrett's reply to what that number meant because okay. there is a couple different deciding factors um based upon the setup if it's tnm build type and uh that kind of stuff so it was a pretty neat explanation okay um, so Hey, John, I do have run requests, too, and maybe I'm not getting them, but uh, I know at one point we were getting a recording of the meeting, uh, but I don't think I've been getting the last two meetings. Okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all still doing it or not on the email. Yeah, I know our our last meeting was kind of a little bit of a more of a roundtable discussion and um, what ended up being some pretty good, pretty good discussion. Um, yeah, I was really interested in that template you created and was kind of telling Robin I want to kind of take a look at what John had done was waiting on yeah. the recording. So, yeah, if y'all still well, have it, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure. Um, thanks to Lisa, she hit the record button on this one because I was just excited to jump in and start talking about the about the meeting. So, but Perfect. Brian, I think last meeting we we I don't know if we recorded it or not, but we did have a technical difficulty where. Okay. The recording didn't take for some reason, so we don't gotcha. have. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, it, it was it was good. I'm, I'm, I want to do a little a uh, little bit better job of of making sure that that everybody has uh, an opportunity. I know that last time we we quickly brought up. Um, the overhead recovery sheet and the guys, everybody that was on the call seemed to be like, man, that was everybody was in agreement on, on what we were taking a look at. Um, and, and I know some have, have, you know, jumped off. Well, I think Robin may be the only one that, uh, that had to, had to leave. Um, but it, does anybody have any, any burning topic on their, on their mind right now that they'd like for us to, to look at for next month? Um, well, I certainly, um, value feedback cause I know I, I don't always want to be the one that just comes up with the, with the idea and the topic. So, um, I'll, I want to send out the email on our, on our, uh, spreadsheet. Also try to, uh, get some feedback as well on, on what would be a good topic to cover. Um, and if not, we can always dig into our system. We kind of got a big list of things that we want to do. Um, certainly. Um, want to stay in touch with with new features of the system um, just keeping everybody up to date and informed um, so we can we can improve our content uh, a little bit in discussion so John I got a quick question and I'm not saying it's got to be a topic for discussion but maybe something to look into but what are some of the ways that other companies are implementing safety into boss? 
I guess, forms or tracking meetings or anything along those lines, or is it just totally separate? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, well, I'm, I'm curious, Aaron, is that, is that you, somebody else have a? I know uh, our crews are using site photos, Has a they have a form in site photos that they're using yeah. to track okay. their uh, safety meetings. Okay. Boss right now really doesn't have a mechanism. Okay. Yeah, well, I was working with Jared about a, trying to get a form on there, but we're just going to use it internally to narrow it down to what we need and see if they can implement it somehow. But just curious what any anyone else was doing. Ryan, one of the things that we do is is we kind of do a workaround with the through the account management side of things. And we created an audit log to where if you happen to visit a site and a crew is there, one of the, I guess, audit logs you could do is a simple five question. Do they have PPE on? Were there safety cones out? Those kind of things. And it creates a grading score for the crew that is recorded, that is tracked, that is measured and can be shared with the crew as well. So that's a kind of workaround that we did. I'll take a look at that. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's, I, I don't know if this touches on it's incredibly simplistic, but, you know, with, with our printable documents and things like that, that we'll have over here, instead of being, you know, somewhere else, just making sure that we've got, you know, whether it be a first report of injury or uh, post accident um, sheet, we'll see if we got anything else that's up here. I know that uh, it'd be, cur I'd, I'd be really uh, curious to know how we're, how we're tracking this and if we're doing any updates on this but the first monday of each month we do a um, we do a safety meeting and i was trying to see if we had put a ticket up here so to be able to have record of when that was done I don't see it here uh but you know to nick go along with your your comment if if we actually had a had a ticket that guys could clock into and then track those hours. We do have an overhead um, uh, ticket uh, that our guys were doing shop items that right. they clock into, but that, that may be an error just to capture it, just to say, well, hey, these guys really are present. That's where their hours went. Everybody could clock into that ticket if you wanted to track it that way. So. Okay. I know we put we put their time in to they all you know sign the sheet and those hours go into um, just overhead shop hours. Shop. Yeah, same here. So, yeah. yeah, good stuff. So, all right. Anything else? So, Shannon, you got any closing comments? Let our elevation team sign off. Yeah, no, I think the only thought maybe for a topic, um, do we want to maybe go around and say, how do we analyze the jobs for renewal? Um, you know, what reports are people looking at? Because, you know, uh, some of our southern companies renew every month, but up in the Midwest, you know, the contracts are kind of coming to an end date and we're going to be starting the renewal process. I don't know if everyone wanted to share what the key reports that they look at um, determining what clients price increase or not so that, that was a thought that came up uh, another thought is like budgeting you know um, have what kind of reports do you use out of boss to help you with your company budget for next year um, so those are two that came to mind yeah like it or or maybe we can even do crew review reports mm -hmm. you know because with the end of the season people are like the h2bs it sounds like they're going back you know how how did the crews really perform yeah okay all right so, Lisa, you got anything in, in closing? I don't, but thank you for asking. Good session. Yes.
Yeah. Stephanie, you got anything? Is this just like consuming water from a fire hydrant right now? No, actually, a lot of what you covered today was stuff that I reviewed in Boss Basics. So yeah. it kind of filled in some gaps. Um, and the questions were really thorough and good because it gave me a little bit more deeper dive. Um, so, and those are all important things to run a business. Like you need to know what those numbers mean. And if you're fine tuning and honing in, that's just going to make you better. Awesome. And thank you for including me today. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're lassoed in now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what Shannon said, this is the time in the Midwest when renewals are going out. And with the craziness and the pricing, it's going to be real important to be reviewing your numbers and your and tracking like the last three to five years too, just to see how your efficiencies are going. Because if you're efficient, you can adjust your pricing accordingly. So mm -hmm. that'll be this, I know in St. Louis and the whole Midwest, this is a real important time. Yeah. Yeah. What I gathered and, and heard from your comment there, Stephanie, is like Shannon should lead our next elevation meeting and taking us through those key reports and budgeting. So, I mean, I, that's a fantastic idea. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you. I've got you know, that's that's a great question. Anybody using a uh, fuel surcharge with fuel prices? Yes, uh, we just put it in our contract that they will, if it goes over four dollars a gallon, they'll be charged one percent of their monthly contract um, to cover the fuel changes. H and M Landscaping enacted it last month for the maintenance side of it, we're still trying to work through the construction side, getting it set up. It's not currently set up in Boss for the construction side yet. And that's a really slick feature too, because I learned about that today too. Um, <laughs> it's our, instead of trying to do it all manually, that's a super slick way of putting it in there with the triggers. Yeah. Awesome. Well, all right, guys. Well, that gets us, I mean, like perfectly ending at 2.30, uh, at our hour and a half mark. So um, hopefully we were efficient with our time and, and learned something I know uh, I did and, and look forward to kind of digging in uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'll be sending out uh, the follow-up and the, and the Excel template to at least get you started. Um, and then you can uh, build off of it um, and hopefully it'll, it'll help out. So certainly uh, reply back to that email. Uh, Nick, thanks for volunteering uh, the articles that, that you had discovered. That's what this is all about, that we share uh, our wisdom and as we're learning different things in the system. So that, add, that adds a lot of power to our group. So I thank um, everybody for your time today and, and contribution to the group. So I hope everybody has a, has a great uh, close out of the month and uh, strong next month. So we'll be talking mm -hmm. to you soon.